Thank you very much, Randy. Before we went to break, I was talking about Jesus who was in process of healing uh, blind men, blind men who realized that he was indeed the son of David and that as the son of David, he would extend mercy to whom he would extend mercy. And Jesus, seeing the faith of the blind men, seeing their, their spiritual sight, mercifully restored their physical sight as well. And in doing that, Jesus demonstrated that he was far greater than any national king could ever be, even greater than King David, the quintessential king of Israel. Following the healing of the blind men, then Jesus charges them. He charges them sternly with the words, See to it that no one knows about this. So, what was Jesus talking about here? I think what should be self-evident is that Jesus is in no way attempting to hide the miraculous. Already he has performed wondrous works throughout the region. And thus the multitudes were keenly aware of his miracle-working power. He had had healed masses of people. Moreover, the family and friends of the blind men would would immediately know know that their, their loved ones had once been blind but now see. Thus the news of their healing would inevitably be shared broadly. Instead, I think what's going on is that Jesus is instructing the blind man to not proclaim him as son of David. I think that's what's in view in this passage, because if they were to do that, they would inevitably intoxicate the multitudes to forcibly enthrone him as a parochial political leader. And this, of course, was not at all the mission of Jesus Christ. He had not come to establish an exclusively Jewish Jerusalem or Israel. Rather, his reign would extend, as St. Paul makes plain, to faithful Gentiles throughout the earth who, on account of Christ, are no longer foreigners and aliens, but but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. To enthrone Jesus upon a literal throne in Jerusalem, as will the son of David, would entirely miss the point. It would have been to exalt the type and the shadow over the reality. It would have been an anticlimactic step backward. It would have been an insult to the glory and the grandeur of the throne of God itself. What is greater? Ruling the entire heavens and earth? Or or ruling over national Israel as the son of David? Well, the answer is obvious. It would not have been obvious to the multitudes at that time and in that place. And therefore, Jesus exhorts the blind men not to reveal the essence of what they perceive through spiritual sightedness, namely that Jerusalem is but a type that has been heightened by the greater reality, the heavenly city where Christ sits on the throne of David. And it is toward that antitypical heavenly Jerusalem with Jesus on its throne that we are to direct, as it were, our eschatological eyes, our eschatological sight. St. Paul would later make this reality plain by noting that the Israelites of his day were in slavery to types and shadows, in slavery to temple, priest, and sacrifice. Conversely, those like the blind men who recognize that the shadow of Jerusalem has found fulfillment in the substance of Christ, well, they are set free 
not only from their blindness, but they're set free to inherit the earth. In his coming, Jesus Jesus forever dispensed with the need for temple priest and sacrifice. A need which would only be made unmistakably plain in light of his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. His mission was not temporary miracles. His mission was a new heaven and a new earth in which the masses would never again suffer blindness or die. So when the text tells us that the blind men went out and they spread the news about Jesus all over that region, of one thing we can be absolutely sure, they would not for a moment suggest that Jesus would be a mere parochial political ruler. Whatever they did or didn't say, to render him a mere earthly king would have been, well, short-sighted to say the least. Of one thing we can be absolutely certain, all the types, all the shadows of the Old Covenant, and that includes the Holy Land of Israel, the Holy City Jerusalem, and the Holy Temple of God, have been fulfilled in the Holy Christ. It is paradise, a new heaven and a new earth, not Palestine, for which the blind men yearned with all their hearts and souls. For though they had regained their their physical sight, they were no doubt well aware of their own mortality. And thus, only the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully adorned for her husband, would, would ultimately satisfy their gaze. Only the master teacher not by a long stretch an earthly kingdom, would forever satisfy their their deepest longings. And I should say, vicariously, yours and mine as well. Truly, truly Jesus is precisely what the blind men called him. The son of David not an earthly king, but one who would rise from the dead as made patly plain by the prophets. One one who forever sits upon the throne of David as king of kings and lord of lords. This is a beautiful passage in which the blind men see Jesus as the son of David. But they see him not as a parochial ruler. They see him, they see him for what he really is. They see that he will forever sit upon the throne of David. That he is the one who fulfills all the types and the shadows that came before. And so while they were blind, The wonder of this passage is they see. Their physical eyes didn't work. Their spiritual eyes were in full force. And now Jesus takes the spiritually sighted, and he restores their physical eyes as well. This is a beautiful passage of Scripture. wherein we once again see Jesus Christ as a wonder worker, one who has never before had anyone like him on the planet, one who will never be followed by anyone as great, for he is 
the Anthropos, the God-man. He is our Redeemer. He is our Lord. He is the one we seek to emulate. He is the one who ultimately restores our spiritual sight. Well, next time we will we will get into demon possession because Jesus encounters a man who is demon possessed, and we're going to elaborate on that again in the next broadcast. Thanks for staying tuned. See you next time with more.